You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. It's changed everything for us. So between this and this, that's all I have for unlimited power. You can range out to the object that you're looking at, and then the map has like a ruler on it, and then you can easily and quickly plot the critter you're after. These are boot dryers. These little tiny fans, they go inside the boot. It's my favorite saw ever. I mean, we can build a house with this thing. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Collin. Today, I'm gonna dump my gear out before all of you to check it out i've done this many times if you followed the the show before um you know usually i try to go over the gear i'm going to take on a hunt in the spring and then when i get back i dump it all out and talk about how the gear did uh this year i didn't i didn't talk about it before i left but essentially it's pretty much the same gear i usually use on my hunts there's a few new things that I brought along, uh, so hopefully this isn't just another redundant review that you've seen already. There is a little bit of new gear that I went over, and then there's just some fresh opinions I have of the equipment that I brought on the hunt. So, without further ado, I'm just going to dive into the the gear I packed. This is for, basically, I was in Alaska, uh, spring bear, I was in um, stateside, I was in a couple of different states doing spring bear. What did I bring? I was on a hunt with Lampers I just returned from with Stealthy Hunter, uh, Brady Miller from Go Hunt, as well as Pedro Ampuero. He came in from Spain and did his first black bear hunt. So we have a pretty, you know, about 18 days of black bear hunting in the, in, uh, the lower 48 and about, about 20 days, 15 days of, of Alaska. Pretty much I brought the same gear almost, um, maybe a, just a little bit warmer jacket and a little bit warmer boots in Alaska. Before we get into all of that, I want to let you know that if you use the code GRITTY50 right now over at Go Hunt, Go Hunt, you can save some money. They have a killer deal going on. Go Hunt just launched their Explorer membership where they have created um, a digital map system. It's pretty... Uh, it's, a, it's this new map system. It has a lot of uh, really cool features that are unique to uh, that are unique to hunters. Um, one of one of the newest features, the map. Just we were messing with it yesterday. You can range out to the object that you're looking at, and then the map has like a ruler on it um, out to these ranges, and then you can easily and quickly plot the 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 critter you're after or the waypoint you're going to try to hike to it's got all 50 states on it uh all all of it the whole membership everything the explorer membership is 50 bucks but if you use the code gritty 50 it's essentially free because between now and june 1st if you use the code gritty 50 you get 50 dollars credit in the go hunt store so essentially um if you need some of the gear i've got here and you're gonna buy it anyway, um, you might as well get the Explorer membership and get yourself $50 credit for the store and get the things out of the store that you wanna get. So, that's a side note. It's pretty cool, it's worth it. Get it, check it out, put another map system on your phone. It's good to have multiples on there. Uh, they all do a little bit different things, but uh, this Go Hunt one is up and coming and I really am impressed with some of the things it can do. And uh, they're only gonna get better and better with it over time. So check that out. Code Gritty50. You only have until June 1st, and then then it's over. And uh, and your your chance to get it for essentially nothing is gone. So use the code Gritty50. All right. So let's get into the gear. I'm just gonna dive into you know from the feet up. What did I wear? First of all, um, I wore these crispy Laponias, and I've been wearing them for quite a long time. Uh, these are three years old or, or three and a half years old. They're my original and they're still rocking. And I beat the hell out of these. They really don't have much of a sole left, yet they're still comfortable. They're still waterproof. They still get the job done. Um, so that's that's what I wore up in Alaska because there we were snowmobiling and it was still pretty darn cold. I was wearing the Crispy Wild Rock. Now, Wild Rock is my go-to boot for when I need insulation and when it's really cold. 
if it's not cold, you can bet I'm going to be wearing the Crispy Laponia. I've just kind of over time. I know I like the Nevada, and there's I like the Guy GTX. The 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 uh, other Crispy boots in the lineup are good, but I just keep now gravitating back to the Laponia or the Wild Rock. It's kind of just what I roll with nowadays. So I r ran. Um, this and then um, some of you all know that I, I do sprain my ankle from time to time or I've had ankle problems over the years maybe I've sprained it once in the last five but still when it happens it sucks so I pack with me a Sweeto Universal ankle brace for my bad ankle and it's in my backpack I'll get it out later I wear that ankle brace with these boots when I feel like my ankles uh, you know got twisted or a little sore or something or I need that extra support or if I'm just carrying a sub, uh, you know, a, a plus 100 pound pack, maybe 120, 130, like Pedro and I carried. I think Pedro carried, um, I think his pack was 130 pounds and mine was like 120 or something like that as we carried our his bear through the cliffs and out of the mountain country we were in. I went ahead and threw the ankle brace on because it was so steep and the load was so heavy. Uh, I recommend, you know, if you're going to use a sheep feet orthotic, which I run in all my boots. If you're going to run a sheep feet orthotic and you're going to even run an ankle brace for that extra support, which I think is very comfortable, you should go a size up on your crispy Laponia. Um, anyway, that's what I've done, and I love the setup. The Some people did try the ankle brace, and they told me they didn't like it. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't comfortable under this boot. I use the Sweeto Universal Brace. In my opinion, it is comfortable, very comfortable, but you do need to break it in. Any ankle brace that you get is going to take time. You need to break that ankle brace in, get it, um, get it uh, uh, formed to your foot, comfortable and in your boot and used to it before you just put a fresh brace on and take off. That's what I recommend for boots. Then I've got right here, I wear these socks. These are um, the smart wool. They got the little man on the back. These are classic zero cushion um, uh, sock liners that, that I have used since like 2005. These have been hard to find, but they, they, they discontinued them and then they brought them back by popular demand. The only place I found them as of last year was on the actual smart wool website. I just had to buy them direct, but these are their, you know, zero cushion classic. It's what they call them. They got the little smart wool man on them. They're thin, 100% like merino wool uh, booty sock right here. And then I wear over, I wear these, and then I wear these darn tough socks over the top. Or I have some old gore socks I wear. Or but I don't like a heavy cushion sock. Um, you know something that's uh, just a basic hiking sock works so this this is what i've been wearing i like this little darn tough standard hiking sock i need wool because i sweat so much if i need to i will wear i'll i'll i bring luco tape and if i do get a hot spot on my ankle my ball of my foot or a toe or something funny is going on um I haven't conditioned my feet for hiking in a while or we're just doing a lot of maybe my boots get wet crossing a stream or something now my socks are soaked but I'm sweating that heat and moisture can lead to blisters that's where that's where you you can fix that with a little luco tape just to just to tape that onto your feet it, it crushes the performance of something like moleskin moleskin is useless stick to luco tape you can tape up uh, those little hot spots and then you're golden. Same thing like if you get chafing on your back from a backpack. Some some guys get a, get get raw back. Some guys just just from hiking, you can use Luco tape anywhere uh, against your skin and it's um, it's a relief. Um, really helps. So that's the uh, the the footwear. How I run the socks and then the pants. I wore the Kuyu Katana pants. 90% of the time um, I love these pants and they I think they're the just the pant I'm gonna wear all the time 100% for almost every time of the year they've got the 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 vent zips on the side with the mesh which I, I like because you can cool but then you don't have ticks crawling into your actual pant like 
Ryan Stone, you know, has a vent zipper, but there's no mesh, and so you can get creepy crawlies in there, and that that uh, I don't like that in the springtime, where we're plagued with uh, with ticks. But this pant is interesting because it, a lot of the pants out there that you wear that are comfort and stretch, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every month or every week, or every day that you wear them. But for some reason, these katana don't do that. The cut and the fit are really comfortable. They're they're not too tight. They're not too too baggy, and uh, they just stay nice for a long time. Now I wore the uh, Kuyu Attack pants earlier in the trip because Pedro talked me into it, and I did like the pants. And they were warmer. It was a cold spring season, but at the end of the day, um, they were still too warm. I, I like the idea of wearing a lighter pant and then if I do get cold, I can pull up my socks so they're knee high or I can throw on my gaiters. And uh, between boots and gaiters, knee high socks, you know, and um, and your jacket on the top, I find like that keeps me plenty warm in springtime. It just, the conditions never were so cold that I could justify an attack pant. That's me, I run pretty sweaty when I hike and stuff, so um, that was that's my recommendation. I love these pants. Now, Pedro, he loves the attack pant. That was the pant he loved, so everybody's a little different, but I just, man, I, I'm so glad I have these katanas. So, over here I wore the Mountain Ops Merino Battleground hoodie. I've been wearing this for about four years now. It's just a basic light merino uh, hoodie, and um, it's comfy. It's got the right weight. I can sweat. It's next to skin, and merino for me is the only way to go on the upper body. Um, I run the merino, and then um, I run this. This is the Kuyu. Uh, this is the Kuyu Peloton 200 hoodie. And uh, I brought this, and then if I needed something to keep me a little warmer, but breathes exceptionally well, um, I wore this Kuyu Peloton hoodie over the top of my my Mountain Ops Merino hoodie, and the two together, I could just go to Sweat Town and yet keep keep the wind and and stuff somewhat keep. I still kept somewhat warm because of those layers. Beyond that, everything I wear is a puffy layer, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, to the gaiters, um, I wore these Peaks gaiters. Uh, these are a newer pair. I wore my other pair for two years. They were the original uh, prototypes. They finally succumbed. They weren't. They're not as built as good as the the latest versions. Not even close. So the. Um, I expect these to last probably three years or more of, I don't know, 200 days of use, 100 days of use a year at least, just stomping through the woods and, and crushing these things. They've proven to be a, a, a just an excellent product, so check it out. Go over to Peaks and check out these gators. They're, they're uh, among, I think, the most durable, toughest gator on the market. They're, you can just get your hands on a pair and you'll see these things are stitched and built to last and they fit nice and they're they're comfortable and they're they're durable and they they do the job so i think they're right up there with or research um some of the top gators on the market i think they're they're better than those i think they're built a little bit tougher so we put them through the paces and we've proven it so these are the gators that we wore throughout the season I'll get into the trekking poles since I got them right here and we're talking about Peaks. Uh, I have been running these for quite a while. These are the, the Elite, uh, Peaks Elite Sissy Sticks. I have this little uh, uh, Quick Sticks adapter. So these are nice. I can stick this in here like so. And then I've created for myself a shooting platform or, or something. You can extend these out and make it longer. So. You can adjust your shooting sticks if you need to. It's just kind of a handy thing to have. Uh, it doesn't weigh hardly anything and, and it just uh, changes your poles and makes them into something, um, you know, dual function. Now, this trekking pole, um, 
you know, when I was up on the mountain, Pedro came up there and Pedro did not put his baskets on his trekking poles. And uh, I've noticed some guys that get a pair of trekking poles and they don't screw on these these guards right here. And what happens is they go around like this and their pole ends up sinking into the earth like this far. This The ground's soft all, often where you're hiking or on a steep slope or gravelly hillside. And your pole just constantly goes deep in the ground and then you're wrestling to get it out with every step. Um, and it's enough to drive you crazy. You always want to throw your little baskets on there. The thing that's great about what Peaks has come up with is this little basket is just right for what we do. That's enough to keep your pole from sinking in the earth every single time you take a step. You know, it just, it, it, it hits that basket, stops, and then you can, it comes right out of the ground especially wherever that earth is soft. But also, the basket isn't so big that as you're coming through grass, we, we call these things grass catchers. We don't catch it on the grass because it's such a tiny little stiff basket. So for our needs, I think it's just the ideal design. And we went through tons and tons of baskets to come up with this one. Um, so I think, I think it, that's just critical. And uh, the guys, some of the guys that didn't put the baskets on theirs this last hunt, they're kicking themselves for, for not having done that before the hunt began when they could see the performance difference between those of us that ran the basket and those that didn't. So uh, anyway, these have a carbon upper. You can see right here, this is carbon, this is carbon, which gives you that lightweight and that stiffness performance. But at the bottom, it's aluminum. And the reason for that is because carbon fiber just can snap or break you get it hit on some rocks where aluminum is much better built for the ground um, the lower portion so this is a brilliant design with the carbon fiber upper and the aluminum lower it just combines to create an excellent design for the pole the other thing about this too without the basket people break their poles all the time Pedro snapped his in half because he he didn't have the basket on had his pole deep in the earth and it went in about yay far and then as you go to to walk your pole is so far underground that when you start to fall down or trip you put all that pressure on the pole and that's when you can snap off uh the carbon or something or bend the, the aluminum so um with the basket on there you don't run the risk of snapping or, or, or bending a pole. And we literally, we'll, this pole I think I've had for two and a half years and it's still in excellent shape and we beat the crud out of it. And then I know dudes who will break their pole on every hunt. I don't know how they do that. It's like, what are you doing with that thing? But I think sometimes it's because they're not running the baskets and uh, it makes that much difference. So... That's the trek and pole discussion. Go to Peaks, use the code Gritty over there. Get yourself a pair. I like the elites. Like I said, I've had those a long time. If you're not running trek and poles, you need to. I don't know how anybody lives without them nowadays. I mean, from crossing rivers, walking logs, climbing steeps, walking out of a tough country with a heavy pack. I mean, trekking poles are a lifesaver. Okay, so let's get into the bino setup. I've been running this for probably four years now, five years. I've got this Leupold marsupial gear uh, bino harness. Um, and uh, I just put my little Leupold rangefinder on the strap on the side here. And then right here I have the 12 by 50s. I just like the extra power um, in these BX5 Santi Ams. I, I just think Leupold's 12s. I like them better than their 10s. Um, that's my go-to. That's what I ran. That's what Pedro ran. Um, and then I have right here, this is, uh, I have one of those full draw uh, range finders for archery that Leupold put out, which is legit. But then I run this Leupold RX 2800 for uh, rifle. You can program it. You can put your ballistics into it. Um, it's it's a sweet um, range finder. What I love about those loopholes is in the rain or the snow or the like harsh conditions, 
it's excellent about returning a range it's up there among the best in the industry um, and then I like the longer range capability like some people will run like a thousand yard range finder but I find like the range finders that can range the furthest I use the most nowadays because like I said earlier with my go hunt maps I use the range finder to to identify distances like that mountain or this this tree is you know 2,000 yards away that that rock is you know 2,500 yards away and then in between those two as I draw like a line tool on my maps in the middle I can plot okay I can range the object and go okay the the elk I'm after is 2,200 yards away then I can use the little plot tool and I can put boom right there that's where my that's where my animal is that's where the rangefinder comes in handy if you have a rangefinder that maxes out at 800 yards you can't really use it for routing and mapping and traveling the way that we like to use it um, with our map system so uh, I like a rangefinder that can go just a little bit further than some of those you know short range a lot of guys are like well I'm never gonna shoot more than 500 yards or 800 yards so why do I need a rangefinder that goes further than that again it's simply for using our digital maps and and identifying routes and distances and plotting things on our uh, on our uh, map systems so um, anyway that's my uh, setup here and then in here I have these um, molded ear earplugs uh, which I use I, I get it like sportsman's and then these things are molded me and Ryan have been using these a while and they're just molded to your ear they're like putty so I'll run that uh, right here in my ear and those are right here in my bino harness so they're always with me if I if I need that um, and we're working on some silencers and stuff for or suppressors for the rifles but until then got the earplugs in there and then right here I have a predator call this is a wounded rabbit call this one's by Primos. I think Ryan has one. It's also by Primos. It's an older one that he's been using for years. Um, and so we'll run that wounded rabbit call for bear hunting because, well, for everything, just because you never know when you need to distract an animal, get one to stop before it goes over a hill. Uh, and we've had a bears charge in on those calls too, so you can call them right into shooting range sometimes as well. So that's that setup. Um, getting over here to the rifle, I'll talk about that. Uh, this is the Backcountry 2.0 carbon. I got the rifle cover, the Stealthy Hunter rifle cover on here, which I just love this thing. Um, and uh, this is the Weatherby 300. You've got the carbon fiber barrel. This thing just shoots. I mean, we're, you know, I'm shooting a thousand yards 1100 yards without a ton of uh setup and practice it just right out of the gate i was drilling with this thing longer range than i than i would normally shoot an animal um it's incredibly light with the leupold vx6 scope on here which is a 3 to 18 this thing weighs seven pounds um so i i couldn't be happier with this this setup ryan ran the same rifle but in uh, 6.5 uh, rpm on this last hunt and then he has a larger caliber coming uh, I don't know if he's going with the 300 3378 okay so he's getting the 3378 he we both want it for those elk and grizzly bear type critters or moose and we he and I have a moose hunt this September so he needs that bigger rifle for that hunt um, but I'm really happy with this rifle, um, the scope, the setup. There's a little battery in here on the Leupold, which then uh, has a little red reticle that lights up and it allows you to, it, it'll flash if you're not level. It's got a little leveling system in there. Um, but so far, uh, this has been incredible. I shot multiple bears with this thing. Um, it's just a little bit, just, it's just more devastating than the 6.5. Uh, that said, uh, it made bigger mess too. Um, there was more, more, um, more internal damage 
those neat little 6.5 bullets preserve all the meat. I didn't lose any meat when I shot my bears with this. Um, but the inside, there was just a lot more blood and a lot more um, of, of, you know, body material that just turned to mush. And so when I was breaking down the bears with, with the 300, um, like I said, I didn't damage any meat, but there was a lot messier. And the 6.5 sort of makes a clean little bullet hole, kills them, and then there's not that much internal damage. Enough to kill the bear, but not enough to cause, like, a mess. This turned it to goo <laughs> on those little be on those uh, bears, but bears are soft, you know. Grizz uh, and uh, black bears, you know, they got shot by this. They just... Yeah, they just turn to soup inside. Um, and uh, But I do like the fact that it's a heavier bullet. When there's wind, I'm shooting a little further distance. I just, I just know that this thing has that large caliber capability to just do the job. So uh, it can be a one-size-fits-all gun. Now, I have right here uh, this, this um, bipod. This is a Spartan Precision. Um, they they put the little gritty logo on there, which is really cool. They sent me this. I've been running this for quite a while. This little Precision Spartan Precision uh, bipod. This is the Javelin bipod. You can go to javelinbipod.com and get one. And uh, if you use the code gritty over there, you get a discount as well. But this bipod's pretty sick because it's nice and handy. If I want to run it, I can. I've got it set up. It's ready to go uh, if I want to run it on the rifle. But we were in some situations where we were running this thing off of a backpack or, you know, I just, just throw it right on the pack like so and didn't really find the bipod um, useful for that situation. And it's nice because you just pull it off. So um, one thing that I want to do is I want to get this thing mounted into the stock itself. So I have a little bit more stable um, uh, position where the adapter, you can get it machined in here. And then that way you have a little less play right here than what I have. So I'm working on getting that done. Ryan is too. But Spartan also came out with another bipod that's a little bit bigger and heavier duty that, that gives you a little bit wider shooting platform. It's a little bit heavier, but it's pretty darn stable so I'm gonna mess around with that as well um, but you know for weight it's crazy crazy light and and um, it's a great setup so anyway if you want to check out um, um, the javelin bipod the Spartan precision bipod just go to go there check it out use the code gritty and save some money so uh, that's the rifle um, as always you know check out stealthy hunter get yourself one of these rifle covers if you don't have one it's padded um it's got the muzzle protector up here it keeps dirt and garbage out of your barrel it's got the little handle on it the foam right here protects your action and your scope i mean it's pretty it's pretty nice uh, it's just enough protection without being too heavy and bulky and adding a lot of weight to your setup we just don't leave home without it. We're sneaking up on game and we just carry the rifle like this when we need to. And we don't bring a rifle strap. Haven't done that in years. Uh, a sling. Because usually we have our backpack and if we don't, we're ready to shoot. We just carry it like this. So that's the, uh, that's the rifle setup. All right, so let's get into the backpack setup. I've been running the initial ascent backpack. With the, uh, it's got the little old man logo. I've been running this for a couple of years. You know, I've used Seek Outside. I've used Stone Glacier. I've used just about every pack that's out there, at least once or twice, um, and usually on some extended hunts. I like the initial ascent. I think the guys that own it are really cool. They're just down to earth dudes, but I also think that their design is just the best for heavy, heavy loads, and I tend to carry a lot of heavy loads. So, they have the, it's almost like an external, like an old school external frame pack. The way they have this, it's like a board. And this, this frame right here, built the way that it is, it just creates a really stiff, uh, sturdy backing, like an external frame pack, that then you strap the whole 
you know, all your gear to. And then once this thing is strapped to your back, it just, it just carries the load. The brunt of that load is strapped to the board and then goes, drives to your hips. And, um, when I'm carrying a hundred pound load, it feels like I'm carrying an 80 pound load when I compare it to other, other brands. Other brands have these internal frames and stays that are just these little skinny things that like an X frame here or an X curve where they have like a little frame pieces that go inside. And once you load this thing super stupid heavy and you strap it to that, it just puts more downward pressure on your shoulders and on your spine than this design does. It just, they just do. They don't have the ability with that design, with that internal type frame design to, to carry the load like, like this does in an external, like as, as you're mimicking like an external load backpack. So it just, it just has that um, stability. Now the, the issue that, that some people have is they might be like, well, it's too stiff, but I haven't found that to be the case. I think it fits really well, um, my back, and then I can always loosen the load lifters or the straps or whatnot if I want to, to sort of loosen how stiff this is uh, against my body. Because it is like having a board strapped to your back, much like an old school external frame type Dana Designs pack. So I think, I think actually this design um, is ideal for hunting, for what we do. And I, I like it the most. I think it just built. Now their bag design has been in the past one of the things that has been my only real complaint because I think they got the frame pretty well dialed. And uh, but they this is a prototype. I'm not going to go into it because it doesn't exist. It's not on the market. But uh, the guys over at Initial have been messing around, doing all sorts of innovative fulfilling all my uh innovative ideas and requests they've come up with some of their own so the the this bag is different than any bag i've used before um it's got much more capacity which was one of my issues this is more like 7,000 plus cubic inches i even want it to be a little bit bigger than that um but i can't say enough uh if if you're in the in, if you're in the market for a backpack i i recommend initial ascent backpacks and then and then I recommend, you know, um, you know, get what they have right now. And then the frame stays the same. You get used to that. You run it. And I pretty much did all my hunts last year with the 6,400 or 6,000, the 6K bag that they, that slide, they make. Slide this way. That sun's right on your face. So I pretty much, um, I recommend you get, get it now with the 6,000, which is their biggest bag. I did all my hunts last year with it, uh, and it gets the job done. When you start packing a pack raft, which we're going to get into here in a minute, that's when the 6,000 isn't quite big enough. But most guys, you're not doing that. You got 10 days. This will accommodate your whole hunt, everything you're doing, plus 10 days of food. Um, but once you start adding a pack raft to it, you're you're getting you're getting you need a bigger pack than this. But most guys aren't doing that. And then later. Um, if you want to upgrade to the next bag size, you just buy the new bag, whatever they come out with down the road, add it to your external frame that you already own and boom, you're in business. You have, um, you have, uh, the latest and the greatest, um, initial ascent. So anyway, anyway, that's my take. I love the bag. This prototype has some issues and I'll be reporting back to them. The things that work that didn't work that I think needs to be changed. And, uh, I love that. Ryan and I love working with companies that that allow us to use their gear, tell them, hey, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, we don't like this, go and fix this, go and change that, and then they actually do. It takes time, though, because each of these ideas need to be vetted. They need to be hammered on, used, beat up, banged up, tested to see if it really does work in the field so that when it does drop as a final product that these companies have something that everybody that that works you know that doesn't that doesn't end up uh being a disappointment you know you've you've got to test these designs um you got to put them through their paces uh, companies who shortcut that they almost always regret it as they end up having tons of returns or a failure point or something wrong with it so it's taken them initial ascent quite a while to, to come up with this and there's still a ways out 
but they're doing it right. So, um, here's my initial, my, my Stealthy Hunter um, glassing pad. Again, go to Stealthy Hunter, get one of these if you don't have one. We use it for, we use it for everything. I mean, we all use it to flag a guy in, like go right, go left, you're in the right spot. Um, we sit on it, of course. Um, it's your glassing pad. We're constantly pulling it out and using it. We'll use it as a as a backrest for the butt of the rifle as we're getting ready to shoot. You know, we'll use it as a table as we're eating and preparing food and stuff. I mean, it's just can fan your fire. You can fan your fire. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's doing this constantly with his. Um, I mean, it just has. It's just useful. It's and it's. Uh, you know, I. It's funny. I never had one all those years, and now that I I've hunted with them for the last few, I just. It's one of those things where I can't imagine not having it. <laughs> it's like, well, how did I live without that before? So, um, right here, I've got uh, the GSI Microlite bottle. We talked about this many times. It's insulated. It keeps your hot, hot, your cold, cold. It, there's a little bit of a weight penalty to it compared to like a Nalgene. It's about the same volume of fluid, 33 fluid ounces. Um, but the thing is you know it's worth the extra weight in our opinion and we'll probably um never give up on this it's stainless steel you're not drinking out of plastic you know we, we pretty much uh use our steri pin to sterilize the water in here and drink out of this and um yeah it's just been i've had this i think three or four years now um and it's my my go-to water bottle I, um, it's just so nice to have cold liquid on a hot, hot day in mid September or to have hot liquid on a freezing cold day in the middle of the winter. You don't have to deal with your water freezing when you are hunting in sub, sub, uh, you know, freezing temps. It's just nice. So, so let's, uh, I'll go through what I have here in this top lid. Um, first and then I'll get into what's in the main bag here but um, here's the top lid that that uh, I, I love the design that initial ascent has you can easily get into it and find what you're looking for it's a big 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 lid and then it's got a zipper that opens wide and I can go in here and kind of get at everything so going through the bag here these are boot dryers by Graxaw um, it's kind of hard to beat these things, these little tiny fans. They go inside the boot. If, if I were to get wet, um, you know, I just plop these babies in here like this and dry out my boots. Um, these things, the weight penalty is almost nothing. Uh, they just weigh just about nothing. And so I can plug this into my USB charger, my dark energy and get this fan going inside this boot and and um and it's just nice if your boots do get water in them take on moisture you sweat a lot you can just throw that fan in there and i'll get into the teepee and the shelter system here in a minute but with your wood stove and those fans or even just a hot sunny day in those fans um it it just helps a lot keeping your boots dry and and uh that keeps you from the from blisters and lots of discomfort so um, these are made by Graxaw there's a link below use the code gritty over there and you can save some money but I love these little babies so that's my boot dryers um, I got two hats I always bring like uh, two beanies one lighter weight one one heavier weight one um, again you know two two is one and one is none so I always bring a couple of, of beanies. The, the, this is a Merino by Peaks. Um, and then, what do I got in here? I got my bullets and a little bullet pouch right here. Um, I brought uh, 10 bullets on the trip plus three in the, in the gun. Um, mostly because I only used one bullet for each bear. But, um, sometimes you might be shooting at wolves. You know, so you want a few extra rounds. Uh, Garmin inReach. This is what we use to communicate to, with each other in the field if we split up when we don't have cell service, and also back home with all our friends and family and and uh, 
everybody we can communicate in the backcountry with a with a service through Garmin. Um, right here I have the Steri pin. This is the this is my water filtration. This is the uh, ultralight UV water purifier. It's rechargeable right here. You just get that charging port recharging and um, this little guy it's just tiny doesn't weigh anything sterilizes our water and um, never been sick never had any problems especially when you're hunting high mountains like we are it's mostly snow melt it's pretty pristine mountain water but you just want to make sure you don't get any of those nasty viruses and giardia and parasites so use the steri pin right here in this water bottle and it's always done the job so that's um that's in there uh, we have a pack cover just used to put over your pack if you get uh if it gets rained on to keep it dry it's just a little little bag that goes over your pack um, another pair of gloves these are just some sick liners that i've been wearing for a long time they're just the inside of an old pair of gloves i had that's all i need I, I wear those quite often i just need just a little bit of in the spring just a little bit of warmth to take the edge off um, i got another pair of gloves in here which are just a little pair of merinos i wear these like when i'm making some breakfast in the morning or there's just a light breeze in the morning or even in the shelter it's just nice to have a little pair of merinos and they don't weigh anything so i'll bring these um, as well and uh, then right here i have the peaks uh, backcountry duo headlamp um, this headlamp uh, is really made for hunters peaks i think is just getting a new shipment in because they got uh, these back during the western hunt expo and they sold out like instantly gone so what what this is what this does this this headlamp really what we needed what we wanted is a headlamp that will burn all night on high power you know a lot of what's designed out there they're not most most backpackers they're not killing an animal at last light that happens to hunters all the time we're out there hunting we shoot something right before the sun goes down well we need a light that's going to go all night long burn all night long this bird is pissing me off. <laughs> uh, we need a light that's going to burn all night long and uh, and basically uh, get us through the whole night. Because you kill a you kill a, an animal in grizzly country, you break it down. I want a high beam the whole time I'm breaking it down. I'm scanning my surroundings, so is my buddy. You're watching your back, making sure no grizzly comes up on this dead carcass that you're working on. You need this beam to shoot out a long way. I need I need distant visibility at a bright light, not some little tiny beam that goes eight feet. Uh, and then I need it to last. I need it to last long enough to load that bear, that meat up in my pack, and then hike back to base camp in the middle of the night. It might be a four-hour hike. And uh, the other thing is when we're in the mountains and we're not on trails, we're not on the Pacific Crest Coast Trail or any kind of like major trails, in the mountains we're off we're off grid we're off trail we need to be able to see where we're going to get cliffed out where the trail dips down you know we need to be able to look some distances and and decide where to go and that's where a bright long lasting lamp matters so that's what peaks designed we wanted it to have both a red light and a white light um the red light so that animals can't see they can't see the red spectrum, so you can run that when you need to, when you're uh, approaching a hunt area, but you still need some light. You don't spook game. Um, it needed to be rechargeable because these lamps, uh, we're going to be out there uh, burning them out, and then we're out there for days and days on end. I don't want to carry a whole bunch of extra batteries. I want to be able to run a rechargeable setup. So this has a re rechargeable port right here. You can recharge your headlamp and your 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 uh you get back to full power so i can run this thing on full power all night get where i want to go with it and um and then i can recharge it and the next that day and the next that night i'm like good as new and it's like having a brand new uh set of batteries and i'll get into it but 
nowadays we're not even packing a ton of chargers we're packing one charger and then we're packing a solar panel and the solar solar panel will do our stereo pins our headlamps our earbuds um it, it does uh my my batteries for cameras um my in reach my iphone um you know as i'm using a lot of maps in routing each day i really need my phone to to stay charged so I can um, navigate and get places, um, and uh, the solar panel does does it all. So we're really not into packing spare batteries anymore. No more triple A's. No more buying batteries at the store, which cost a fortune. It's all rechargeable stuff is what we're trying to run here. That's why the Steri pin is what it is. We don't run the classic anymore. The classic requires batteries, and I don't want to run batteries um, that aren't rechargeable. So that's that's this setup and the cool thing about this backcountry duo is it has memory it has uh settings where you can reduce the brightness um it'll remember your last known setting just all the things that we wanted you'll see a few people mention or show you a headlamp sometimes that's that looks a lot like this and they'll be like this is the same lamp it's not this lamp has totally different guts totally different design inside the efficiency of the the of what of the uh, battery and how it runs, all different. This thing is uh, a legit headlamp for backcountry hunters. Um, so you you'll want one of these. Check it out. It's at uh, Peaks. Go go there. Use the code Gritty, and uh, get this backcountry headlamp duo. It's legit. Um, I always carry two spoons. Two is one. One is none. You never know. Uh, I hate losing spoons. Make them orange, Bryce. Make them orange. Yeah, and, and I want it to be a long spoon because the long spoons, uh, you know, as you're eating out of your dehydrated meals, your peak refuel or something, you need that long spoon as you're getting in there. But I just think it sucks to lose a spoon. So it's always nice to have two. And then sometimes you just lose a spoon that morning. I don't want to spend 20 minutes trying to figure out where I put my spoon last night. I just grab my spare and I just go to town. When I pack up to go... I inevitably find the spoon that I lost earlier, but it's just convenient. Always bring two spoons. Uh, the weight penalty is virtually zero, and the benefits are huge. So um, that's that. And then um, we're going to get into right here. I have fire starter. I just have multiple formed them. Waterproof matches. I have uh, like this pyro putty plasma lighter. Um, these big big lighters right here. These little guys. And then. I have some pyro putty and I have some trioxane tablets that I use as fire starter. Trioxane tablets are phenomenal. They just, they burn like crazy. They'll burn underwater. Um, you can find those like on Amazon sometimes, but I have lots of trioxane that I run. And um, so I have a little fire starter kit there. Um, right here, let's see, I have a kill kit, which is... Uh, consists of these Graxaw game bags. This is enough for like 250, 300 pounds of meat, um, typically boned out. But these these little puppies, that's all I need, this little tiny lightweight. I hate carrying heavy game bags. I'm spoiled nowadays. So I always run these Graxaw. Um, they're not that puncture resistant, but we have found that doesn't matter because we debone just about everything in the back country. And then when we don't, we still put bone in. We just make sure it's not sharp. It doesn't puncture the bag. And then we'll hang our game meat in these things for 10 days in the back country. Um, no flies, bugs get in them, they breathe. Come home, clean them up, and we use them again over and over again. They're, uh, they're, they're great. They're just an awesome little game bag, you know, just... Game bags are one of those non-sexy things that you got to carry, and they weigh so much generally. And and to be able to run something like this has been great for us. And then um, got little little game bags here. I have this. Uh, this is the Goat Knives Ibex. It's um, the newest version of the uh, replaceable blade knife. I love this thing. It's so minimalist. It it gets the job done as I'm skinning out a bear or whatever, caping it, doing the whole thing. I love these little replaceable blade knives. It's kind of hard to beat for 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 doing animals. And uh, here are some blades. These are just the replaceable scalpel blades that just go on there. Um, when that gets dull, it's handy. 
And then uh, I just have some 550 cord in there for hanging the meat up in a tree or whatever we need to do, a um, little bit of rope. So that's the uh, little kill kit, not much to it, but that's right here ready to go for when we get a bear and we need to, you know, chop it up and, and uh, hang the meat. So uh, that goes there. Uh, then here's another goat knife, which is what I pretty much run around my neck. Um, I like this neck sheath setup, and then the knife itself is all one single piece. Um, and uh, I love this thing because it's got the Nitro V steel, so it's got this really tough steel that's that's hard, hardened, and and holds an edge really well, but is still sh is still able to be sharpened uh, with your own tools at home. You don't need to send it into uh, a knife sharpener professional to get it sharpened. The steel is is workable enough, but but then also holds a, a, an edge. It's hard steel, so I love this this knife right here. I there's no fail points on it. Um, you can beat the hell out of it, and uh, and then I like having it right here around the neck, and it weighs very little. So skinned a lot of animals with this this year. You always want two headlamps because two is one, one is none. So you want to back up. You could opt for just a small headlamp. Sometimes I do. I have like a little tiny headlamp that I'll pack. Uh, on this trip, I just brought a second peak. This is my original prototype. It's not as good as what is brought to market now, but it's close. It, it, it's one of the original um, testing models that I had, but um, you always want a second headlamp. Um, and then what else do I got in here? Um, basically, I just have... I have a couple things. I have, if you haven't checked this out, by the way, these are the Stealthy Hunter, um, uh, like, pull-out pouches. Uh, you can grab these at Stealthy Hunter. Go there, use the code GRITTY. Uh, these just help you keep your stuff organized. They're kind of stretchy. They got this cool material. They're handy to have. They're, there's different colors. And uh, then, same thing here. I use these super thin, lightweight Mountain Ops versions of the same thing this is uh what this one's one liter whatever um you can grab these little pull out pouches to to organize your gear um uh you can get them at mountain ops you can use the code gritty over there you can get these 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 are a little more robust you can get these at stealthy hunter um but right here in here i have my dark energy poseidon charger um this is uh, what I've been using since about 2015, I believe. I still, I have a ton of these. They all still work. I've had them, um, it's phenomenal. I mean, I use them weekly sometimes. I've, I use them like mad and uh, they're still holding a charge. They're still performing well. And some of them have been in use for more than five years. So Unreal, it's a great solid product. I can't, I can't uh, recommend it enough. And, um, and this one is the the newest uh, Poseidon Dark Energy. Um, this is the only charger, the only battery pack I brought with me this year on my hunts. In the past, I would bring three of these at a minimum uh, for a 10 to 14 day excursion backpack trip because I, I just don't want to run out of power for this or my headlamp or my my stereo pen or my iphone for my maps and we watch a lot of movies i'm just being honest like i downloaded a ton of movies and this season me and pedro were watching a lot of films and movies that i had downloaded because we got stuck in the tent quite often in pouring rain and the snow cold miserable days we were there all day and it was really nice to just throw up the phone and just watch movie after movie um laugh hang out pass the time and um that's where uh in the past you know you'd have to be careful conserve power but because we now bring one of these and this solar panel we kind of have just unlimited electricity and i'm going to pull that solar panel out here i got to use it extensively this year and uh it's in my pack <clears throat> and this is an anchor uh, anchor power port solar and uh, this thing has been 
it's changed everything for us. So between this and this, that's my electricity. Uh, that's all I have for unlimited power, unlimited electricity. Technically, you could leave this behind. Lampers uh, on on a six day uh, leg of the hunt, he ditched this altogether, and he just used this uh, to catch up on all his power needs. Um, and uh, and this is 14 ounces, and that's that's it. And you always know, you know, you may not get, you might get a rainy day, but we even set this up in the rain and overcast, and it, it'll often still give you a charge. It's got all three panels, um, and I'll I'll even bend this backwards right here, which is where the electric power uh, is, and you can plug in your your device like so. Even in the shade of the trees, it's it's charging right now. So you can see, um, here it is in the shade of these trees, in the back of the, the Polaris here, and I can take this, plug it in, and you can see that it's still charging even in this shade. I'll put it on a rock, and then I'll let it be there all day. I'll leave in the morning. We'll come back at night, It'll have rained, poured rain, even snowed a little, and then melted, and all that stuff. And I'll come back to a fully charged charger at the end of the day. And then that night, I can hit juice up anything I want to. Um, I can bring this with me and just charge up whatever I need as, as we stop in glass for a while or do whatever we do and grab, a, grab some juice from the sun. It's amazing. I mean, the new tech is just amazing. So this has just been super cool to have. Um, we pretty much, um, even with the crappy weather and the rain and the junk that we got, um, we were able to always, always have enough electricity to um, basically run with unlimited use of, of electricity and not really have to worry about it. Never had, never been able to do that before in the backcountry. You're always wondering if you're going to run out or if you're going to end up using your your phone in the night. As you're like for eight hours on a night hike, you're just running your maps with a bright light all night long. And then you watch a movie or two, and boom, your iPhone's dead, and you just don't have that many charges when you're just packing in a battery pack. And for the next few days, now you have to be super super careful about your power usage to try to get through the end of the hunt or you end up turning off your in reach and really not talking to your family very much for two or three days because you can't afford to use up what little battery you have to try to recharge it those days are gone with this we just don't even worry about it so that's been incredible i heard from lampers that brad let his get rained on right here and it jacked it up or still works just fine it was his poseidon that for some reason wouldn't take a charge because mine charged really his didn't so for some reason uh but i if, if as long as uh what i found as long as i fold the, the the electric ports under that's enough to keep it from getting water in it and this thing can get rained on and hammered and beat up and um it doesn't care and uh and totally recharges it's pretty phenomenal so anyway that's the um the power deal that's what i have in the top lid these are just cords um i have a little pouch that has you know a few uh cables in it for different for different uh devices uh, i keep those right here in in this pouch and so that's my 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 electric power usage deal there so the last thing that's in the top lid right here and that'll get into tie into the shelter discussion here in a minute that's this silky pocket boy knife um, this thing weighs very, very little. Uh, it, it, uh, it's an incredible piece of kit. It, um, it cuts through. I swear it'll cut through anything. I mean, it's just a heavy-duty saw. It's much, much more powerful and much more uh, usable than you think it is. It's a phenomenal saw. And uh, it's cool, too, because you can... If you need to change the angle, you can. It doesn't have to be hyper curved. Like if you're cutting something flush with the ground, you you're not stuck with this curve. You can you can hit different adjustments, um, even all the way to here. Uh, so it's got it's got 
a lot of cool features and then it also just folds in on itself like so so you don't need to carry an extra sheath or anything like that this pocket boy has been it's my favorite saw ever i mean we can build a house with this thing you can build a lodge you can you can with this saw you could survival yourself out in the bush for forever this thing is just uh it's just incredible so this little saw is also super useful if you're running especially a small stove uh, because you can cut little short stubby logs you know for your 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 shelter your wood stove shelter your, your wood stove that you're using in your shelter uh, with this and just get the perfect little logs for burning in your little tiny stove and i'll get into that here in just a second but so that's that's all that stuff right there um diving in here here's the stove okay this is just a tiny little guy that i brought this year um this is the little cub u-turn i seek outside um i think you know it just wasn't that cold you got a little bit of snow a little bit of rain and this little stove is surprising what what it can heat up and um this little stove right here th this is all it is it's about yay tall it's got the little door here um you throw the pipe in it boom out through the roof and this is uh you got yourself a little stove now i do recommend a little bit bigger you might as well pack um the medium u-turn rather than the cub i don't i don't i don't have a medium i had a large and so um i'm gonna get the medium you might as well pack the medium because the pipe weighs the same no matter what the pipe is the pipe okay whether you have a stove that's that's a cracker box or you have the next size or the next size the pipe is identical so um you're only saving a few ounces if you go with the cub versus the medium u-turn and the medium u-turn is just that much bigger that you never have to struggle to get the heat up inside the shelter that said in the springtime like this you really only need the cub to keep get your boots dry to heat up some hot water to just be comfortable in your teepee in your or in your shelter uh, and i'll get into the shelter system here in a second but i do recommend going just a little bit bigger than the cub i might you might as well pack a u-turn i recommend getting a u-turn again this is what i have so this is what i ran but um here's my stove setup it's very hard for me to leave my stove at home um in the springtime this year we lived and died by that stove the stove was a game changer uh not having a stove just sucks when it's wet and cold and miserable and you're trapped in your tent all day which was the case this year so the stove is just awesome now the shelter that i brought this time i brought the um i brought the where is it It's a, I didn't bring a teepee because we were hunting some really steep country. Brad was in some really steep country, super steep. And we had trouble finding places to put, to put a teepee. There just wasn't enough room. Um, but this, this system allowed us, this is the uh, Silex right here. So this Silex stove jack, uh, it sets up with your, with your uh, peaks trekking poles. You get your trekking poles in each side like so and you pitch your 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 shelter with those so you don't have to pack um i mean it's just the the shelter itself you throw this baby up on a, a steep slope in a deer bed or you kick out a ledge on a cliff on a steep and you can pitch this thing up and you can pretty much put it anywhere it doesn't have to have flat ground and it'll pitch nice pretty well and then you got your little stove in there and it's a single man um, the weight for, of this setup is, is, is so minimal. So this is my, my shelter and uh, I'm ready for the apocalypse. So it's pretty tough to beat this setup. Um, and, uh, that's kind of how we ran. And the, the neat thing about this too is when you bring like a jet boil, you know, I don't want to bring the extra fuel um 
I just don't want to bring anything extra that's that weighs too much. And so, for example, um, I'll bring when I have a wood stove. I'm just much more confident in the idea of bringing only one can gas canister for 10 days. The thing too, let's talk about the stove for a minute. Um, I'm running the Jetboil Minimo and um, it has a micro valve on it for a micro adjusting the fuel output. So you can really simmer this thing down so it just barely, it fine tunes to just a little tiny flame. It fine tunes up to whatever temperature, whatever flame you want. What I found in comparing this to someone who brings a jet boil, like Pedro brought just your traditional jet boil. It's either all, it's all full tilt blowtorch or it turns off. There's no micro adjustment of the fuel output. Those, uh, those jet boils end up using way more fuel because I can get by on a 10, I can get by 10 days with, with just one of these um, full canisters, uh, little tiny canisters, and that's heating up my breakfast in the morning, getting hot water for my dinners at night, and maybe uh, a hot drink, a every, you know, once a day, a couple of hot uh, drinks here and there. What's nice about a wood stove is, I, I, at the end of the day, if I do run out of uh, a little bit of fuel or like at the end of the hunt, there's still two days left and I don't really have any gas left, which ne really never happens to me. That's more of a Lampers thing because he drinks so much hot coffee and I don't. So, but I can always, there is that comfort of knowing like I can just take my little pot and set it on top of my wood stove and boom, I have boiling water and uh, you can really stretch the use of this um by just using the wood stove and you just bring one little canister and you always have that as an option and if you do get stranded in the back country for extra days you run out of fuel you always have your your tight neat little stove for boiling water and it, and uh, a lot of times we can get through a hunt just because we always run we're running the stove in the morning and in the evening and so we're leveraging that instead of gas and so we hardly even tap into our fuel for most of the trip. So you can always, um, you know, it's, all, it's always nice to have that redundant source. But I can't recommend enough the micro adjust capability of the Jetboil Minimo. It's more efficient, uses less fuel. And the last thing I want to do is carry one of these big canisters. I never do. Lampers does because he his biggest fear in life is not having enough hot coffee. Um... Okay, so that's the uh, the shelter system. Um, getting into what else I got here. This is the rain gear I brought. It's hard to justify leaving behind. This is the Sitka Dew Point. This stuff is um, it's like a heavy duty rain gear without, but by but still being super lightweight and and small. So um, super impressed with the Sitka Dew Point. Um, the stuff I beat the crap out of it. Ultra waterproof, durable, uh, but weighs almost nothing. I mean, it's the lightest rain gear. I don't know. I haven't used the Stone. I haven't used the Kuyu. I I, I want to try out some other brands, but for now, um, I can recommend this as an excellent product. This Sitka Dupin. It's it's uh it's what I know. Um, there could be other stuff out there. I don't think there's much that weighs less than this and performs at this level, but I'll have to do a little more testing. But right now, I mean, I can't believe, I mean, it's, this is my rain pant rain jacket set up, the whole thing. And uh, it, it just, it, it, it's nothing. I mean, it's, it's not much at all. Compared to what the old days when I wanted to pack rain gear, a lot of times I just ditch pants. They're just too heavy it's too heavy for what I got and I just rely on gaiters and then let my pants get wet but now these pants are so light I can hardly justify leaving them and they're durable and you know so that's the rain gear setup um, technology has come a long way I'm glad I have those uh, what else do I got in here this is another puffy um, these are the puffy pants I live in puffy pants. I never go on any hunt on any, even Arizona. It doesn't matter. I always wear puffy pants. I've been wearing these for two years now, beating the crap out of them. These are the Black Ovis 
Um, they're not flashy. They're not handsome. These are the XL, I think. These are, I always say, yeah, here's the Black Ovis XL. Uh, when it comes to puffy pants, I just want giant. I want huge pants that just cover everything, feel comfortable. When I sit down, I want to be able to sit down in the squat position and just feel like this loose, baggy set of pants because I'm not hiking in them. I literally am stationary. I throw them on to stay warm and then I take them off when I go hike again. These are cheap. I think they're about a hundred bucks. Um, they're, they're from Black Ovis and um, I think you can use the code gritty over there. You'll save. These have welded seams instead of stitched. That's part of the way that Black Ovis saves some money. But when it comes to puffy pants, it's hard to justify spending the money on anything else out there because a lot of the other stuff is twice as expensive. And it's like, why? The, these, these pants aren't flashy, but they're 800 filled down. And, um, and uh, they, they, uh, I get the XL and boom, I'm in business. I have my little puffy pants. I live in these. I don't know it. If you haven't hunted with puffy pants, you're missing out on one of the greatest creations on earth for backcountry hunting, for all hunting. So I like the fact that I can wear the katana and it's a light, light pant. But if I do get cold, I'll just throw my puffy layer over and I'm, I have enough warmth for the apocalypse. You cannot really hike in puffy pants. They're just too warm. You never really need to. But they stay right here in this top pocket right here of the pack. I stuff them right in here, boom, and then I can just grab them real quick, boom, in and out, in and out. Same with my puffy jacket. So I take them off, stuff them in here, hike, sweat, climb a hill, get to the top, stop moving, cold sweat, throw on my puffy pant, throw on my puffy jacket, dry my clothes out, and uh, get warm as I stop moving, and then take them off again and hike some more. So that's my, that's, that's my, uh, puffy pants set up. Nothing fancy. Black Ovis. Then right here, I've been wearing these gloves since like 2015. These are, um, made by Sitka. The only thing I don't like about them is the camo. Uh, other than that, I think, I, I, I just can't imagine living without these. These have, um, what I love about these is you can pull the, the, the insulated, um, Prima loft center out like this and just use it like so. Or you can just use the Gore-Tex shell. It blocks the wind and uh, blocks the rain and you can just run this. Or if you really need the heavy duty uh, warmth and dryness, whatever, you can put them together and the wind blocking capability like so. And then if they do get damp or wet, one thing about these is they just dry so easy. Because this comes out and you can just hang it in the rafter with your wood stove in your shelter. And same thing with the Gore-Tex outer. You know, you just turn it inside out and then hang it up. It dries instantly. And you basically just have a really versatile uh, mitten uh, setup that works really well for all, m most conditions. Now, when it comes to gloves and mittens, I don't really wear gloves anymore when, I, when we're talking... Um, trying to stay warm gloves don't keep you warm mittens do so it's always going to be a mitten for me um gloves it doesn't matter even the blizzard g like gtx uh whatever i have those sitka blizzard ones that have the fingers that are like three inches wide for each finger and uh you're still cold there's just something about your in mittens where your hand stays your fingers stay close together and it warms it up that is the way to go so those mittens are my go-to glove setup been running those for ever um, I just wish they weren't camo um, but I, I love those I also wear the Kuyu uh, mittens and they have like a crab claw between your forefinger and your thumb and then it mittens out right here on the three fingers on the side that's a pretty sick glove too but you can't pull the liner out of it like you can um, the Sitka version here. And so it, to me, it's just not as versatile for different temperature conditions, wet conditions, and so on. Sometimes it's just windy and rainy. Well, I just want a Gore-Tex shell. I'm sweating, you know. Other times, 
um, you know, once once you do get your hand, pull it out, it gets rained on or wet, and then you slip it back in, you pull it out, slip it back in. Well, when I go to dry the mitten that's all in one and, and not a two piece, it just takes forever to try to dry it out once it gets wet inside, where the Sitka version dries very easily. So, um, going here to what else is in here? This is my Kuyu um, vest. This is the Kuyu Super Down Ultra uh, puffy vest, and uh, love this thing. The strength, the the warmth to weight ratio is insane on this on this Kuyu puffies. They just they get so small, but yet they're so warm. And so I always wear a vest. I love vests. And then on this hunt, I ran this. Um, this is the Kuyu. Uh, this one is the Super Down Pro. So I ran this Super Down Pro. Um, again, this is the outer layer of the puffy that I wear. I'll wear that vest. I'll wear that Peloton hoodie and other stuff underneath. And I'll layer up and down depending on how cold it is. I'll wear my puffy, my Black Ovis puffy pants. I'm sure the Sitka and the Kuyu puffy pants are better than the Black Ovis, but I don't know that they're $100 better. Um, so I tend to enjoy, I, I tend to wear the black Ovis just because of the price point. Um, but I think if I had, if money wasn't an object, I, I think I'd probably buy the Kuyu Puffy pants because the Kuyu Puffies in general, I think, like I said, weight to performance, I think Kuyu probably has the best Puffy equipment out there, the best insulated gear. Um, this is a Possibles pouch. Basically, it's got it's got things like uh, Imodium AD for diarrhea, Pepto-Bismol. I've got um, Benadryl in case, you know, an antihistamine for like a bee sting or some kind of allergic reaction. <clears throat> I've got some pain meds in there, ibuprofen. Um, I've got uh, cough drops, Cepacol, stuff like that for uh, if, if you were to get sick, some cough syrup type stuff. Um, I've got a tourniquet in there. I've got a blood clot kit, band-aids, ace bandage type stuff like gauze, rather, um, sutures, you know, just all that emergency equipment that you need to, uh, to, uh, to survive. Um, and, uh, Luco tape, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I got water, I got purifying tablets like iodine. And chlorine just in case my steri pin were to fail so that's kind of my emergency like medical kit right there um, and then um, these are my water pouches I've been carrying three of these lately just because we often get water and then pull 2,000 feet up to the top of a mountain with no water and so these three liter uh, hydro packs, I'll fill all three of them up and then my my um, microlite water bottle and then um, I'll carry these up there um, and uh, so these are the hydro pack three liter um, bladders been using these for years and then over here this is a um, outdoor research uh, dry bag and so what I've got here is, um, you know, my bear that I killed this year, we had, I killed it on day one and we had 10 days of hunting still to go. So this dry bag, I was able to, um, take my bear, uh, we butchered it. I hung it in my Graxaw game bags in a tree that night. It, it was in the tree all night, nice and cool night. Cooled the meat all the way through to the bone um, in those dry bags. It was pretty dry in the morning. Got a little crust on it. I took those those bags and I threw them in here. I had to debone one of them because I just couldn't fit it in with the bone in. So I deboned one of the hindquarters. I dropped all those bags into this dry bag. And then I basically sealed up this uh, dry bag. I've had this dry bag since 2016. Sealed it up like so. Now my meat is in this sealed bag. Then I went over to one of those um, streams that were icy, icy cold. The snow is melting, coming off the top, 
it's a tributary into a big main river. I dug a, a hole kind of in the water. I buried this, uh, this, this meat inside this bag into the creek bed. Then I covered it in rocks. And then I left it there for six and a half days. And it basically acted as a little refrigerator. You know, by allowing the meat to cool that night and get a lot of airflow and just drop in temp. And then while it's still cold, throwing it into my dry bag, keeping it utterly dry, but submerging it in an icy creek, allowed it to act as though it was put in the refrigerator for six or seven days. Um, super ice cold. When I pulled it out after six or, it was after almost seven days, I pulled the meat out, smelled great. I hung it up in a tree for the next four days. I got the meat out of the back country basically on day 10, uh, uh, 11. So I got the meat home, butchered it in the kitchen, and I have been canning bear meat and rendering bear fat for the last two and a half days. And we have jars and jars of meat and it's all fresh and good. So I find that I, you can use a garbage bag, a, 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 a contractor garbage bag, but I pretty much never leave home without this OR Research dry bag. I have found this thing just to be so useful and versatile. When we're crossing rivers, Again, I can throw my camera gear in here, my real expensive electronics, and I can make sure that even if I slipped and fell, my stuff's not going to get wet. Um, it's, it's more durable than a garbage bag is. Um, I've been reusing it forever. Uh, the other thing is, is um, a lot of times, you know, we'll leave our bear meat hanging in a tree in the shade for 10 days. And the flies will get on it, but they won't be able to get into the bag and it'll get lots of airflow. Now a bear hide, that's harder to do because the bear hide needs to be stretched out. If you put it into a game bag, it collects heat, um, it wads it all up, it doesn't get airflow around it, and you can lose your hide more easily, your big bear hide. Where with meat, it's hanging on bone in a tree and it can, it can hang pretty easily like that but the hide doesn't so the hides i have found that i'll lay my hide out on a rock stretch it out let it get nice and cool at night the wind blows and all that and then what i'll do is once it's kind of tacky and dry and and it's had a night to cool i'll roll that thing up tight like a sleeping bag i'll throw it inside my or research dry bag stuff it in there seal it tight airtight and then I'll bury it in a crick, and I am confident I can leave that thing in the crick for 10 days, and it won't spoil. Um, I don't like to put my meat in in for 10 days because the meat um, can it need without some airflow, it can take on a um, a tangy uh, sort of vinegary like you know can kind of start to turn a little bit and uh, give it a little. A little bit of a taint or flavor that you don't want so um, five days in a creek bed yes with the meat but uh, you can you can do easy lots more than that with the hide because you're not eating the hide you're just keeping it from turning um, I have found like so anyway I, I I love this dry bag so uh, and that's that's the story on on keeping meat back there in the backcountry for a long time even on those sunny days, those hot days. So the, the dry bag is here. The other thing too is sometimes your teepee's a little crowded. Well, you know, we just I just stuff a bunch of gear in here, boom, 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 seal it up and just leave it outside my teepee and I don't have to worry about it getting wet or anything like that. Or we'll stash our gear as we go on a stock and we'll empty our packs. I can throw 90% of what's in my pack in here, seal it, hook it on a branch on a tree or something and I can take off and I, I know my stuff is protected so it's just a versatile versatile uh, piece of gear um, Thermarest uh, Neo Air X-Therm air pad um, I recommend this I beat the hell out of it uh, it's insulated it's a little heavier than some of the other ones on the market but it's also warmer and more durable. Pedro and Brady Miller decided to bring the eight ounce version of this thing. Uh, it's insane. It's so lightweight. It's crazy. 
they brought it and uh, I made a bet on how many days it would take for them to pop it and uh, Pedro popped his on day three I think um, and uh, had a leaky mattress he highly does not recommend that one look I just don't think it's worth going too light on your air pad just get the air pad with a little more robustness um, I did get a spark from my stove shoots out happens sometimes spark shoots out while you're loading some wood into the stove and it's popping hot spark lands on your air pad it takes just one second and poof, it melts a hole but it's very easy to fix you know I was able to just quickly patch it and I was back in uh, business instantly so um, you know duct tape will temporarily patch it and then you could use um, a real patch kit um, can use uh, what's that tape called tenacious Brad? tenacious tape that does pretty good um, so yeah that's the air pad right here this is my uh, ground cloth and uh, I love this this thing right here this is just Tyvek it's like it was like 20 bucks on Amazon I bought this stuff um, uh, when you first get Tyvek it's crinkly and loud and you're like oh this sucks just drop it in your washing machine wash it with us with a washing machine that has a center post um, that will break it down and make it supple and soft the thing about that's great about um, Tyvek is it's cheap but it's also very puncture resistant. So not only is your pad protected from moisture, um, you know, and you can lay it out on the ground and kind of keep you dry, but it also just really stops you from getting holes and punctures in your air pad. It does a great job for that. So I've just got this little Tyvek inside this Mountain Ops uh, stuff sack and uh, it works great and weighs, weighs nothing. Um, so you can double it as a tarp too if you need to it's got grommets in it um but this thing uh that's what i've been using for a couple years now and i stopped having problems with holes in my air pads and it's uh super lightweight um and then uh lastly i'm not even gonna pull it out i just have a, a western mountaineering badger sleeping bag um i've been running that sleeping bag for three years and uh, it's my favorite sleeping bag. I use it for all conditions, all year round. Um, I think it's a 20 degree or 15, something like that. Regardless, um, I'm a pretty cold sleeper and the Badger does the trick. I rarely, you know, between the X-Therm, uh, Thermarest air, uh, air pad and the Badger, I have all the insulation and warmth I need for um, all of our hunts ranging the, the full winter seasons. Um, if I do get cold, we always have a wood stove late season anyway, takes the edge off, keeps the teepee a little bit warmer, but I also have puffy jackets and other layers I could put on if I need to, although I never do. So I love the Western Mountaineering sleeping bag. Before that, I was running the, the Stone Glacier Chilkoot. I hate that bag's cut. It's a great, it's great. It seems to be made with great material. Ryan likes it, but, uh, for me, it, it, it was too tight around the legs and so I couldn't spread my legs and it was miserable. Um, I don't like the stovepipe bottom that is so uh, constricting. I want a bag where I can like get loose and open up a little bit and so the cut of the Western Mountaineering I think is better. As far as them being waterproof or durable, uh, I find that my Western Mountaineering bag goes flat less than my stone. Even though the stone has a sort of a treated down near the foot box, I found like mine went flat often and my Western Mountaineering bag does not. Um, they're both great bags, but for, for me, I, I think the Western Mountaineering is a uh, much, it, it's the bag for me. So hopefully you find that useful. And, and uh, if any of you are looking for a bag, I recommend it. It's a great, it's a great bag. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to mention is the uh, pack rafts because they were such a major tool for us as they are usually every spring. But even in the fall, we're leveraging pack rafts to get across rivers to float a little bit of distance sometimes to different spots. We have so many mountain hunts where the pack raft is like money. It, it, gets, it gets us, it, it helps us win big. Especially if we see a critter on the other side of a river, a lot of guys are like, well, that's it. I mean, just have to stare at it. 
we can we can shoot it and then we can float over and get it and so um for our money just to cut to the chase we really recommend when it comes to the pack rafts we're using alpaca raft the caribou is sort of the number one all around uh air uh uh, raft that we recommend the caribou weighs five five pounds and it'll carry i believe 400 pound capacity although we push it to 450 and, and stuff and it handles just fine um the the mule is the other raft it's seven pounds and it carries 500 pounds of capacity but extra two pounds we found isn't of of added weight isn't really worth it you can pretty much get yourself your backpack and an animal, a bear or a deer, wherever you need to get it, um, with a caribou. It it'll it'll accommodate the the, the deer, it'll your backpack and a grown man. Um, it's close. It's 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 on the edge, but it'll do it, and it'll do it at five pounds. Where the mule, if you are a little bit bigger dude, or you just want a little bit extra space you can get a little more capacity a little bigger deck a little bigger boat and it's uh seven pounds but for us we just ha don't believe that extra two pounds is worth it you can pretty much do it all with the caribou uh, so that's our boat that we recommend um i have a big boat over here and i'll i'll show you the two the difference here so right here this is a this is a uh mule um this is an alpaca mule and this is you can see how big it is it can fit right in the top of my pack this is seven pounds okay now this little mule um ryan has a, a similar looking rig that's a caribou i have a caribou on the way the caribou is like i said five pounds and it'll pretty much do everything that we're able to do with the mule, just about. So we just don't understand or we just don't believe you really need the mule. Any, any, it, it, you know, um, if you're going to be floating a lot of days and extended periods, then maybe then, then maybe then you'll, you wouldn't mind the extra two pound penalty for what you get. But for us, mostly we're crossing rivers, doing short little jaunts. The caribou is where it's at, at five pounds. So, um, right here, this boat is like, what is this, Brad? 10 or 11 it's 11, pounds? I think. 11 pounds <clears throat> for this puppy. You can see the difference here between, you know, this boat and this boat. So, this boat's rated to carry 500 pounds capacity. I think this is... Is it a... 800. 800? I can't remember. Something like that. But you can see, you're talking about twice... You know, twice the weight, uh, almost. I mean, and the bulk. I mean, it's just a big boat. And one of the other things that adds a lot of weight to this boat is it's self-bailing. Meaning that it it's like a raft, a whitewater rafting, you know, raft where it's got this, this, this mule, this other boat we have. All our other boats just have a flat bottom. If water dumps over the side, it fills up the boat. You got to... You got to scoop the water out or, or pull over and dump the boat out. This boat has a baffle system in the bottom. So when water comes in, it, leak, it leaks, it's, it, it drains on its own. It's called self-bailing. Well, it adds a couple of pounds of weight to have that feature. Plus, every time you get in it, water comes in through the bottom. So water goes both ways. It comes in through the bottom and goes out through the bottom. But it can never like take on too much water because basically it has a mesh bottom. Well, we don't like that for most of what we do because we just want to be able to throw our backpack in our raft on the deck, jump in with our boots and gaiters on maybe and some rain pants, and then just cruise to the other side and get out without water uh, really getting in the boat. Um, so by having just a, a sealed flat bottom, we can do that. If water splashes in over the top or the, the side of the boat, Yes, we're gonna get a little bit of water inside, um, and that's just that's just life. But the self bailing, no matter what, as soon as you stack stuff in there, you get like a couple inches of water in the bottom. It just it just fills in with the weight in there, and 
and then your stuff's no, wet, wet no matter what. So for us, it just the self bailing just we're finding it's not that useful. Even when we float, have been floating long distances out of the backcountry using our boats, we found that if we did take on some water and it felt like the boat was going to swamp, you know, we just drifted over to the side, dumped out the water, and then got back on the got back on the water. Um, if anything, if anything, we believe we probably would mind having a boat with a white water deck on it to keep the water from splashing over the top. We'd prefer that to the self bailing. We just found like the self bailing is the is the style we're the least interested in that appeals to us the least. You're colder, wetter, you know, all of that stuff. So um, this is a massive boat. I, I just don't know that we're ever going to use it that much when it comes to maybe in a big caribou hunt down in Alaska somewhere. Um, but it's just it's just not practical to pack this thing for backpacking, uh, at least with the, all the other gear that we're already carrying from camera gear and other parts of a hunt. It's just a lot of boat um, and um, it's too much. So that's the that's our situation. We really recommend the caribou I think that's that's where we're where we're at today. Now, here's the paddles. These are the Aquabound uh, whiskey paddles. Um, these this paddle right here is a pound. So if you have a caribou, you're five pounds. If you add your weight to your paddle, that's six pounds. That's a six pound setup that you're carrying. This paddle right here will break down into four parts. So you can you can. Um, have it in two parts like so but you can also take it down further like this and really like stuff your paddle inside your pack if you needed to in four parts or just strap it to the outside however you want but um, sometimes we'll we'll uh, bring just one boat with us and all the guys will just use the one boat and that boat is used to ferry across if we happen to shoot something on the other side of the river um, it just opens up so many options for success um, when you can cross rivers uh, to get at that game. So that's the uh, setup there. Um, the last thing I'll go over is I did get this dry suit, which is a new deal. Ryan and I have a float trip in Alaska that we're doing in September for moose and caribou. And because of that, um, we've got ourselves, you know, I, I've got myself this dry suit system. This little dry suit, I think it's one pound is what it weighs. And, um, you know, it's your typical, uh, it's, your, it's a super lightweight dry suit. So it's got the silicone neck, the, the silicone around the, the um, wrists and such. And, the booties. I, I was able to throw this on over my my uh, just what I was wearing my hunting gear. Just throw it on, and um, it's one pound. It was pretty nice to have. I threw it on, climbed inside of it. The only thing I had to do was remove my boots, kept my socks on, my braces, everything else. Just throw this thing on, and um, and then jump in the boat. And I was able to jump out, you know, uh, in the water that was above my you know above my belly button up here around my chest and then when ryan came across i just leaned out and grabbed his boat on a really swift river and caught his boat as he was coming by and he could jump out and so it is kind of handy it's for the the weight it's just one pound um and uh that's as much as the chota hippies uh waiters weigh and yet this is a full body rig instead of just just uh from your crotch down so, um, you know, I, I got to say this little, uh, it's, it's called, uh, Hydris, the Kokatat, I think is what it is. Um, right here, Kokatat, uh, you know, I'm not a whitewater rafting hardcore dude. I've done some, but this little dry suit, um, about a pound and, uh, you know, rolls up it. We'll see. We'll see. I could see myself, um, you know, using this on a number of different hunts, um, for, you know, especially if I'm, you know, a lot of times a guy will bring heavy waders on a hunt and that's, that's a lot of weight and it only goes up to your chest where this actually 
can go all the way over your whole body. You could swim with this thing across. It floats a little bit. You know, it's 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 interesting. We're gonna do a float trip. I'll bring this, uh, especially if you are doing a float trip. It's like you're not really carrying it anyway because you're floating with it. So it's kind of hard to justify not bringing something like this along on a trip like that. Uh, I will say that uh, it did it is a little uncomfortable to wear that thing around your neck like this because it's it literally feels like I've got a garrote around my neck. It's so tight. So hopefully that stretches out over time or maybe. I don't know. That thing is tight around my neck. I just have a real man neck, so I think it's uh, Brad's pencil neck probably a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. than my man neck, so we'll see. But I think that's it for um, kind of talking about the gear. Um, I'm excited to be able to talk about this initial ascent pack when uh, it gets closer to being available to bring to market because it's got some really neat features uh, that are going to be cool. Um, and um, lastly, don't forget to use the code Gritty over at Go Hunt. I'll remind you again between now and June 1st uh, when you use Gritty 50 on the new Go Hunt Explorer membership, you basically get the Explorer membership uh, uh, app, um, the map system for free because when you buy it, you get a $50 credit at the Go Hunt shop. So, um, between now and June 1st, it's not much time, but it's enough. Get out there, check out that membership. Um, Go Hunt Explorer membership and check out the new map system. The um, one thing I will say that I really loved on this last trip was the, the satellite imagery was just nice. Like the detail in the satellite imagery was just so so much better than what I've used in the past which really did make it easy to really nice to interact with as you were looking at rivers and mountains and trees and so forth it wasn't sort of this old school looking satellite it was like really tight nice looking fresh uh, clean satellite imagery um, really did make it pretty cool it's got other features too um, some of the things didn't work as well as I wanted and I think that um, over time that's that those those bugs are going to be worked out as go hunt um, continues to improve uh, the performance of the product so anyway check it out use gritty 50 over at go hunt use uh, the codes below in the description field you'll find links to a lot of the equipment that we have we pretty much have uh, arrangements worked out affiliate codes worked out with most of the companies here if you need dark energy use the code gritty over there use it at stealthy mountain ops peaks and save yourself some money as you're uh, as you're getting ready for your fall season coming up here soon and thanks for tuning in as always supporting our show we have new films dropping here soon be on the lookout we're going to try to have 8 to 12 weeks of film drops, uh, sharing all of our spring adventures with you here coming up uh, right around the corner. So thanks for everything once again, and stay gritty. <laughs>